everyone. Today we are going to be learning about the history of flowers. And specifically, we are going to look at the language of flowers and what different flowers mean. To do this, we are going to use some paintings from Georgia O'Keeffe. She was a well-known painter who painted very large scale images of different types of flowers. So the symbolic language of flowers has been recognized for centuries in many countries throughout Europe and Asia. They even play a large role in William Shakespeare's works. Mythologies, folklore, sonnets, and plays of ancient Greeks, Romans, Egyptians, and Chinese are peppered with flowers and plant symbolism. And for good reason, nearly every sentiment imaginable can be expressed with flowers. The apple blossom, for instance, means preference. And here we're going to take a look at Giorgio O'Keeffe's painting of an apple blossom. Learning the special symbolism of flowers became a popular pastime during the 1800s. Nearly all Victorian, Victorian homes had, alongside the Bible, guidebooks for deciphering the language, although the definitions changed depending on the source. In the Victorian era, flowers were primarily used to deliver messages that couldn't be spoken aloud. In silent dialogue, flowers could be used to answer yes or no questions. A yes answer came in the form of flowers handed over with the right hand. If the left hand was used, the answer was a no. How flowers were presented and in what condition were also important. If the flowers were given upside down, then the idea being conveyed was the opposite of what was traditionally meant. How the ribbon was tied said something too. Tied to the left, the flower symbolism applied to the giver, but tied to the right, the sentiment was in reference to the recipient. And of course, a wilted bouquet delivered an obvious message. More examples of plants and their associated qualities during the Victorian era included bluebells and kindness, peonies and bashfulness, rosemary and remembrance, and finally tulips and passion. And here we're going to see Georgia O'Keeffe's interpretation of a tulip. The meanings and traditions associated with flowers have certainly changed over time, and different cultures assign varying ideas to the species, but the fascination with perfumed words persists just the same. Some plants, including roses, poppies, and lilies, could express a wide range of emotions based on their color alone. For instance, a red poppy meant consolation. And here we see a red poppy. A red tulip was a confession of love. A calla lily was interpreted to mean beauty. And a clover said, think of me. Unsurprisingly, the color of roses also plays a huge role. Red roses mean love, but roses come in a variety of colors, and each has their own meaning. For instance, look at a, we can look at a white rose right here. And that white rose symbolizes purity and innocence. A red rose means I love you. A yellow rose means jealousy. A lavender rose means love at first sight. And the coral rose means friendship. And then finally, we have pink rose. See that right here? Pink rose means grace and happiness. So I hope that you enjoyed looking at these paintings and learning about the meanings of different types of flowers. And I hope that now when you pick a bouquet, you think about what the different flowers might be symbolizing and what message you are sending. This has been the history of flowers. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.